Hello and welcome to the LLG Grapevine podcast. You're listening to Helen McGrath, Head of Public Affairs, with your essential roundup of local government legal news. Last Friday, our LLG president, Quentin Baker, was thrilled to be introducing day two of the LLG Governance Conference with an impressive lineup of legal practitioners drawn from our corporate partners. The day was held virtually, and if you missed it, you can still catch up on all the sessions via paid for on demand. Some highlights from the day. Mark Greenborough took us through the legal and constitutional provisions concerning the appointment and dismissal of staff, who can make those decisions and how settlements can be authorised and whether and how they can be challenged via external order. John Gordon took us through the Code of Conduct and highlighted some of the key advice covering discrimination and bullying. Peter Ware and Laura Hughes from Brown Jacobson reminded us that shared arrangements are enhanced by the adoption of a single code and posed the question, how do you manage a situation where a person is subject to critical comments in a report? Justin Mandel and Rob Han from Sharp Pritchard advised us that council should treat the expiry of PFI contracts with as much care and attention as their initial entry into the contract because of the need to not only deal with termination, but also consider the future of the assets and answer the question, what next? Tanya Corsi from ICANN recommended managers always consult staff in a remote environment, provide them with a voice, do regular surveys, because what worked in the first six months might not be fit for purpose going forward. David Kitson from Bevan Britain concentrated on facilitating community leadership and interaction through digital channels, whilst ensuring no one is left behind. Posing the question, how do we ensure effective access to technology, accommodate disabilities, other formats, other languages, and ensure social inclusion? Mark Heath from VWV Solicitors provided a clear practical advice on dealing with member conduct issues, whistleblowing and dealing with bullying and harassment. Arwen Wilcox from Thomson Reuters provided a detailed case update of important developments within governance on a range of legal issues. Whilst Arwen Brown and Matthew Gregson from Anthony Collins rounded off the day on a panel session where they discussed the likely impact of the new health and social care bill, which anticipates a new system of representative leadership for healthcare involving a new integrated care board and integrated care partnership, both of which will have local authority representation. With many other speakers besides, the second day was packed full of essential insight and our thanks go to our corporate partners for not only their immense knowledge, but fantastic support of LLG. Leaving the conference behind and moving on, LLG's president has published an article on our website regarding ethical governance and standards following the much reported developments within central government and the media storm over the last two weeks in respect to the PM and his approach to the standards committee. Quentin Baker stated, the question we in LLG are pondering is whether this renewed focus on the need for augmenting the rules on ethical standards in central government will spill over into local government where, for the past two years, we've been awaiting the government's response to the recommendations of the Committee on Standards in Public Life. You might also be interested to read Quentin's thoughts on the exit cap payment following some murmurings in the press. In other news, The Guardian runs with an article following a report by the Bar Council's Race Working Group, which says that ethnic minority barristers are paid less and are at greater risk of bullying. It found, quote, that barristers from ethnic minority backgrounds, particularly black and Asian women, face systemic obstacles to building and progressing a sustainable and rewarding career at the bar. The figures back this up, with black female junior barristers on average earning £18,700 less per year than their white male junior counterparts and are four times more likely to suffer bullying and harassment. The report makes specific recommendations relating to access to the profession, retention, progression and culture. And the Bar Council have committed to reviewing the impact of these in 2024. In housing, the Master of the Roles announced the end of overall arrangements for possession proceedings, with Sir Geoffrey Voss stating, the procedures to be followed for the future are those set out in rules and practice directions. The informal guidance published in the overall arrangements document 
should no longer be viewed as governing or guiding court procedures, which are properly contained in rules and practice directions or listing policies, which are a matter for designated civil judges to decide in the light of local conditions. And finally, Michael Gove, Secretary of State at the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, gave evidence before the Housing, Communities and Local Government Committee on the 8th of November, where he set out his thoughts and plans on a number of issues. When asked what his most immediate and pressing priorities were, Michael Gove responded as follows. The most immediate is making sure that we give coherence to the operation of a set of levelling up missions across government. The second is to make sure that we develop an approach towards housing that deals with a set of interconnected issues, in my mind, improving supply, improving quality, and dealing with the difficulties that individuals have in making sure that they have a decent home and a chance to get on the housing ladder. The third area that I would mention alongside these two, it is intimately linked, is thinking about how we strengthen local leadership to make sure that local government is being seen visibly to affect a beneficial transformation in people's lives, both economically and in the quality of the places where they live. And on that note, that's it from me. You can read all the articles mentioned in this week's podcast, together with a roundup of COP26 and many more besides by Bulletin 44, available now on the LRG website. Have a good week.